James Cook, Ted Banny. Oh, you couldn't you couldn't want a better team in the corner there, could you? It's a story that most people know, but Isaac Chamberlain, before he even turned professional, was over sparring Deontay Wilder in the build-up to his fight with Pemaine Stiverne, which, as an experience, did a lot for him and also, I'm told, went well. He described it to me as a high-speed chess match. He says he saw Wilder knock sparring partners out, so he carried out of the ring, knowing that he was in there next. can imagine that, you know, sparring Deontay Wilder, you know what he's all about, and then seeing what you've got to see in the beast in front of you in the ring. I bet that done him some good. But yeah, this Granger's coming out and having a go here, so, you know, at least uh, he, looking at his record, he's sort of half and half, so, you know, it doesn't suggest that he's going to just lay down it, and from, from the opening sort of 30 seconds, it looks like he's coming to have a go. Well, he went 10 rounds in April 2012 with Mike Stafford for the Masters title. Stafford then went on to box John Lewis Dickinson for the British title and took him the distance. He's also been in with Dickinson. That was just over four rounds six years ago now. But he's come here, as you say, Dan, to have a go. He's been inactive. He's been out for a couple of a couple of years. And I think sometimes when you don't know what kind of gas you've got in the tank, you may as well come out all guns blazing. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I think that's what he is. But by the looks of him, you know. He doesn't look out of shape, you know, he, you can see some abs coming through there, so you know he's been in the gym, but you can see straight away, you know, the quality lies with Isaac Chamberlain, snapping out a nice jab there, and it looks really nice and neat and compact, textbook jab, and uh, sort of Granger is just sort of piling the pressure and sort of hitting and hoping, you know, trying to get forward and trying to land some shots, but um, Chamberlain, again, look, looks like he's got the quality here. And uh, he's catching catching Granger with a few nice shots here, but the, the jabs are key in this in this fight, I think. Well, he's also been sparring the likes of Anthony Joshua in the build-up to this one, and also British champion Oval McKenzie. I asked him about the sparring with McKenzie because McKenzie, you know better than me, has a reputation of a man who doesn't really understand the concept of work. He just lets those big heavy hands go at all times, whether it's in the gym or on fight night. And he said that it was okay, you know, he hits hard but not that hard. Well, when you've been sparring the likes of Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua, I don't think anyone hits hard. But um, yeah, ag again, it's like uh, sparring, with lo sparring that he's, he's got there, his quality. You know, he's getting caught with a few shots here as well, which, you know, it's, it's good to see. You know, the shots haven't really moved him. He's sucking them up and he, he's biting down on the gum shield and coming back. And like I said, this Granger, you can see here now from the shots, he's not coming here to lay down, he's coming here to win this fight. He's a. Uh, He's trying to get Chamberlain back to the ropes and he's letting his shots go. Nice left uppercut there from Chamberlain, but he did get clipped on the chin with the right hand just before that, as you say, and as they grapple in close, Granger's able to get some effective blows in, just pushes Chamberlain away. Again, that's, you know, with what you were saying about the, uh, the Olympic-style boxing, you know, it's hard to find competitions at, the, at these heavier weights, so you might be forced to step up a bit sooner than, than, than you'd rather step up. You know, we just see Ahara Davis in there with, you know, someone that he was going to quite comfortably beat. But you know, at this higher weight, I don't think that um, I don't think that that's that's the story with this fight. You know, Granger looks more than capable of uh, of winning this fight. But you know, Isaac done well there and took the first round for me. Bit of blood coming from the nose there, and Martin Granger as he takes a seat. Nigel Travis, as I mentioned in the corner, we'll be seeing him later on when Ricky Boylan comes out for his fight. Just some action from that first round. And from speaking to Chamberlain, I think really this is what he wanted. He wanted someone who was going to come out and try and have a fight and try and cause him a few problems. Interesting division, the cruiserweight division, globally and at the British level. The title with Mackenzie, as we say, John Lewis Dickinson lost to him unexpectedly in most people's eyes. And then 
lost a subsequent fight but came back in really good style against Stephen Simmons. So plenty going on at Cruiser. Thing, that's the thing where you were saying, you know, the beautiful thing about boxing, it only takes literally one shot to, to change a fight. And when you're in there with a man like Ogle and McKenzie, you know, that shot can, can quite easily happen. But um, spying the likes of Ogle McKenzie is only going to put, you know, stand him in good stead for this fight. Champion looking to get back on the jab. At the start of the round, you mentioned, we mentioned Ted Bami and you picked out James Cook over in the corner there as well. Down at Miguel's, there's some great former fighters. Richard Williams trains down there too. I was just sitting Super. there waiting for, for Chamberlain to turn up and I saw this guy hitting the bags and I knew that Richard Williams was down there but I looked at him and I thought he just doesn't look old enough no, to be he, Richard he Williams. He's still in incredible shape. Yeah, that's it, he keep, keeps himself in great shape and like you said, there's some great former fighters down there. You know, like you said, Bammy, James Cook, the secret Williams and there's some great current fighters as well. They had, you know, Isaac Dogbo down there. He's a young up and coming fighter. Really good kid sparring um, Carl Frampton quite a lot for a few of his fights. You know, Isaac, uh, they've got Racky Noble down there who's from with the Goodwins. They've got some good guys down there. And again, uh, British boxing seems to be buzzing at the moment. The gyms are all busy and packed out and full of quality, which is only a good thing. Granger just trying to get to work on the ropes there. Chamberlain just tied up his left hand. The referee just getting involved. Dillian White strolled in actually down at Miguel's when I was down there last week as well. And Isaac was training with Chris Congo, who's thinking about turning over having been on the GB squad and also in the Lionheart squad but didn't get a Lionheart's fight there was a there was a window there for him to have one but he wasn't asked to compete I think he was a bit disappointed about that well, he's a good fighter you know Chris Congo. I remember him from the amateurs um, his brother Obid who was really good and they've got an older brother Elvis who was also a pro um, but Chris is a brilliant fighter he'll, he'll do brilliant in the um, in the pros um, be interesting to see which promoter snaps him up and where he goes from there yeah, like you said, the, the, the gym is absolutely buzzing down there. Dillian White is another, another heavyweight contender. He's, I think he's been calling out Anthony Joshua. He wants that fight more than anything. And from what we've been reading on the internet, I think Eddie's keen to make that fight at some point, um, at some point in the future. Granger having some success here just above us. He got a right uppercut through over on the far side of the ring just a few minutes ago. And he's just drawing Chamberlain really into the kind of fight he doesn't really need to be fighting here. Chamberlain could keep this at range and snap that jab out, but he's just been pulled in to a close quarters contest. He looks different class when he's when he's got him on that jab. He, you know, the timing's there, the, everything's there, the speed's there, it's catching him brilliantly, but Granger sort of, no, I think, got a good right hand there from Chamberlain as well as Granger walks in. But I think, you know, Granger knows what he's got to do and he's, he's making a good job of it. He's roughing him up, beating him up the, uh, the apples and pears a bit there. You know what I mean? He's... Um, the quality you can see is coming from Chamberlain, but it's like you said, Granger, just that workmanlike performance. Nice flurry of punches there from Chamberlain. Left hand followed by a right, then another short left as Granger was a fairly static target in front of him. The blood is really pouring from that nose now. Varying up the shots there, Chamberlain, left to the body, followed by a left to the head, then throws in the left uppercut. Strong finish to the round by Chamberlain. Just towards the midsection of the round, as I mentioned, he maybe got drawn into the kind of fight that with his skills and his tools, he doesn't really need to be fighting and already signed to think that Martin Granger is beginning possibly to feel the pace just a little bit in here. Yeah, when he was starting to land them combinations there mid-round, you could see Martin Granger was sort of sucking the air and he, he could see he didn't like it. I think again, that's the key with uh, Chamberlain now. That jab and some combination work and I think he can get Granger out of here. And I see him um, a bit of a shift there in the, in, in the way the fight was going and uh, the quality started to really show there from Chamberlain. We're talking about Chris Congo briefly and he had a really interesting bit of kit he brought with him down to the down to the gym down he had a headband with a bit of elastic attached to it and a tennis ball on the end and then just punching it out in front of him it was really impressive and then just step aside let it swing past him two yeah. around and do the same again get that coordination going and that timing we've set I've seen that he's, he's all put out on his, his social media and it, you look at it it's, it's amazing really the way that he, he catches that ball we like to be an opponent watching that Chamberlain looking to step in behind the jab with the right hand. Granger just trying to pull him back onto the ropes into the corner if he can. Punching on the break there. A little bit naughty. I think Chamberlain knows as well now, you know, the um, stoppage could come if, it, if, he, uh, if he steps up, you know, the, quality, the quantity of the punches, not the quality. You know, behind that jab and then 
throwing more combinations, and I think he, he could get him out of there. Granger knows he's quite badly uh, busted at the moment, and um, Chamberlain sort of catching him the most shots that he throws. I think if you just put a few more shots together, he could turn the fight a bit more. Nice one too there from Chamberlain in the corner away to our right hand side. He tried to stem the flow of blood in the corner between rounds, but the tap has been turned back on. Granger looking to try and double up with the uh, left to the body, then left to the head. Again, it's that jab, see that beautiful jab, step back right hand there. Beautiful work, and again, it's that jab, that jab is, is the difference in this fight. You know, he, look, he looks quality with it. And that's what's made the mess of that nose, I think. Well, he was sparring Stephen Simmons in Simmons' camp for his fight against Dickinson that we mentioned earlier on, and he damaged Simmons' eye in sparring. It was one of those things that spread down the boxing grapevine. People found out about it, and really his reputation as he was turning over to professional, or just had, I think, had one fight maybe. He was started to pay more attention. It's no surprise, like you said, a man that's been in there with Deontay Wilder, and you know he hasn't, he's not been knocked out. He's been in there. Look, the quality there when he's letting his hands go. You know, you can see that he's, he's real quality. You know, Stephen Simmons again. He's another brilliant fighter, tough as nails. Um, box for the GB squad and things like that. So you know, just some of their names you've been mentioning there. You know, Simmons, Joshua, Kamacha, um, Simmons, Joshua, um, Wilder. You know. Look at that, you know, you mix some quality like that, it's like you said, you're only gonna uh, you're going only gonna improve. And again, that jab finding its finding its home every time, straight on straight on the nose. Well just 30 seconds left in this third round. He's put together some good combinations, shows some really fast hands in this round, Chamberlain. Granger has been a fairly static target for those flurries. I don't know what his plan is, Martin Granger. As I mentioned, he had two years out of the ring. Whether he's going to look to try and get back into the ring regularly or not, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, really. If he's not, then Nigel Travis in the corner might start to think about calling this a day at the end of this round. Yeah, I, you know, I think, to be fair, I know, Nigel, I know Travis quite well from the amateurs, the Olympic-style boxing, should I say. And... Um, He's a good man, you know. He's a good man to have in your corner. I think, I don't think he would have took this guy if uh, if he was if he was just looking to come back for one or two paydays. You know, obviously the guy's in good shape. He's not. It's not like he's come back and he's he's really fat and out of shape and unfit. You know, he's hanging in there with a top prospect here, taking a few shots, sucking up, coming back. You know, he's not giving up. He's still letting his shots go. So I think that there you know, that speaks volumes in itself. But Chamberlain just uh, possesses too much quality for him fitness and, uh, and fitness obviously well he's a Steve Wood fighter Martin Granger and he knew that Nigel Travis and Jamie Moore were going to be down here anyway and Martin Granger was coming down by himself so he just requested that one of the two of them look after him and what's it like down when the nose goes it's not very nice mate to be fair uh, you know bleed, bleeding from anywhere isn't very nice but I used to suffer when I was really badly as, a, as an amateur and it's, it's, not, it's not nice, you, you sort of get used to it, as, as strange as it sounds, but um, you know, obviously I don't know if Martin Granger's sort of dealt with that problem before, but um, yeah, it's, obviously it's not, it's not the best thing in the world, but it's just one of them things, ain't it, it comes with a job and it's just one of them, one of them things that happens in boxing. I think there are kind of facets to it that people who haven't boxed, and I haven't myself, wouldn't really understand. The pain is an obvious one, nice uppercut there from Chamberlain, but it affects the breathing, the blood hits the back of the throat, you have to swallow it, that can upset the stomach, there's all sorts of things. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, you know, it's not nice, you know, swallowing blood and things like that, like you said, if you ever get cut, the blood running into the eyes, things like that. Boxing is definitely not for the faint-hearted, but, um, you know, is in a weird way, we all enjoy it and we all love it, or else we wouldn't be doing it. Chamberlain again managed to get a good uppercut through there as Granger just trying to lean on him, pull him back towards the ropes if he can and then just take half a step back and make some room for his own punches but the volume is coming from Chamberlain and really when he gets to the kind of range he needs to work at Granger, the hands just aren't quick enough and Chamberlain again just able to lean back, sway to the side and ditch in the right. You know, see, brilliant jab from, from Chamberlain and starting to sort of do what he wants now he's moving around he's not trying not getting involved as much as as what he was he's using his boxing skills a bit more when he's on the ropes he's a brilliant uppercut brilliant uppercut there and that, you know again that's one of them shots that has damaged uh, granger's nose 
doing really well now, Chamberlain. He's sort of, um, you know, look, catching shots on the shoulder, slipping out, coming back with the uppercuts, looking class. Referee with a quick word about using the shoulder there to Chamberlain. So he just clubs the right hand down on the top of Granger's head. Final minute of the fight coming up. If he could just put his foot to the floor here, Chamberlain possibly may be able to get the stoppage. The referee could possibly jump in if too much unanswered work comes from Chamberlain. I'm more worried about Martin Granger's nose. I've got a cream tracksuit on and that blood keeps flicking all out of the ring. Dodging, I'm dodging spittles of blood. Right hand behind the guard from Chamberlain. Gets through. And good then body shot. The body. That was a good body shot. You can see the wince on Granger's face. Yeah, he's to, he, listen, I think if he was just here for the money, Martin Granger would have took a knee by now. He's hanging in there, you know, he, he's determined to see this fight out. It's 20, you know, 20 seconds left. I think he'll see the end of the, the, end of the round. And look, still coming forward. He's still coming forward and having a go. Showing he's got guts, but again, Chamberlain, the quality is just, the quality is all with Chamberlain. That was no knockdown, slip ruled by the referee, and whatever Martin Granger is getting paid for tonight, he's earned every single penny of it. Oh, definitely. And this is a very useful fight for Chamberlain, it's a good workout, because as you said straight away, Danny, Martin Granger came out and gave it a go in the first round, he gave it a go all the way through, but he was quite effective at times in the first round as well, yeah. and Isaac Chamberlain, all young fighters, you need someone who's going to come and fight you. Definitely, and it? And Martin Granger, he, he came out and he had a right go there, you know. Chamberlain showed his quality and showed, you know, his, his experience and working with Ted Banny and James Cook, covered up well, took the shots on the guard, come back with his own shots, you know, opened up Granger. But, you know, man's been out of, out of the ring for how long? Was it two, three years? So, you know, not a bad performance for his first fight back. And, you know, he can take a lot away from that performance. But again, the quality and the quantity was just with Isaac Chamberlain. And uh, I think it's fair to say that he's going to be a, a worthwhile addition to like the Cruiserweight division. Well, I'll have to see to the The current notes with the referee. As we wait for the official announcement. Here we go. Martin Granger, a share of one of those rounds. And as we were saying, beat an effort by Granger after two years out of the ring. And if you're going to come back after that kind of absence, not many people would fancy going straight back in with somebody with the youth and ability of Isaac Chamberlain. They have real hopes for him down at the girls. Ted Barry and James Cook there. They think he really could be going places. Well, listen. If he keeps turning performances like that, you know it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt his chances. And a lot of people are gonna be talking about, you know, he's going places. As a quality performance, picked some beautiful shots there as well, and seemed like he knew when to step it up and turn it up a notch. And um, I think that had another, there'd have been another couple of rounds in that fight. I don't think it would have gone the distance. But you know, quality performance from Isaac Chamberlain, and uh, he'd be happy with that. Well, here he is now, ringside with Sophia. remaining unbeaten in your third professional fight what do you take from that performance uh you know I, i'm just using what i learned in the ring in the gym you know using little things that i learned in the gym i didn't really have time to warm up in the changing room so you know i had to warm up a bit in, in, inside the first round you know uh, i want to thank my lord and savior jesus christ i want to thank my uncle ted Bami, uh, my trainer james cook as well you know uh this is a good team that i have and i'm learning all the time so these are good learning fights for me i never really had any journeyman from the start of my career you know because it's I, every fight is a learning curve because Eddie, Eddie Hearn and them, they believe that I can be the best. So what I need to do is uh, just keep progressing, keep, keep having these good tough fights that I'm learning from. You know, because he's a good guy. He was a former international Masters champion. So to get that one under my belt, it's great. Yeah, 
there. He was durable, but I think towards the latter part of the fight, your combinations really seemed to pull off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what we worked on in the gym, you know. And uh, I think it would have been better if I warmed up properly in the changing room. But you know, there's been two TKOs from two of my, my friends that were fighting early on today. So blame them. Yeah, <laughs> blame them. Um, you've also uh, been sparring with the likes of Anthony Joshua in the past, Deontay yeah. Wilder. That's great experience so early on in your professional career. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, and uh, all I'm looking to do is take that experience into the ring. You know, take that experience into the ring and get better. You know, I'm a student of the game. I'm always learning. I'm always trying to be the best that I can be. So let me just carry on doing what I got to do, and then hopefully we get some titles in the future. Great, well done. Thanks a lot. Thank you.